Hey friends, Irene Lyon here. Welcome to this video, to this channel, and to this world of healing trauma, nervous system health, and all things neuroplasticity. First of all, if you have not yet subscribed to this channel, please do so. Somewhere near this video is a little sub subscribe uh, button. It's usually red. And also make sure you turn notifications on. Granted, you want to be notified when these new videos go out, when I do live streams, and also when I post in our community board. I'm going to be posting more there um, because I've heard through the grapevine, through you guys here on YouTube, that um, many of you have left Instagram and Facebook and I post quotes and little bits of writing almost every other day or at least a couple times a week. And um, I'm going to post those here just so that you can uh, see these posts and the education and the information within. So that is one reason to subscribe to this channel and get notifications. Um, next thing I wanted to just say quickly is that um, thank you for being here. Thanks for continuing to follow me. For those of you who are new, thank you for being here and pressing play. We're going to keep doing these videos. Um, it's very clear that this information is needed and really turns a lot of light bulbs on in people's bodies, minds. It gives them really answers to why they have been struggling so much healing their system with a lot of good practices that are out there. Um, but when we're not working and we don't have this foundational nervous system piece on board, when we don't understand how traumatic stress gets trapped in our, not just our nervous system, but in our entire somatic physiology, we're missing a very important piece. So just a little bit of a, a thanks to all of you who are here and really following this work. Thanks to my students. All right, so back to this video today and what I wanted to share. So every month for the last sort of year or so, we do a special topic lecture. And this year I'm gonna be sharing small clips from these long form lectures, because they're a little longer. Often they're close to 90 minutes long, usually an hour to 90 minutes. And I know sometimes it can be hard to dive into one of these longer videos. So this clip I'm gonna share with you is from the February 2021 special topic lecture where, I talk, where I'm talking about all things polyvagal. And just a quick note, polyvagal means many vagus. Vagus is the vagus nerve and the vagus nerve is part of our, or it is really our parasympathetic nervous system. I'm not gonna get into all those branches because you can watch that long form video or a few other videos where I dive into the branches of the parasympathetic nervous system. Now, this concept was coined, this polyvagal concept by someone by the name of Stephen, Stephen Porges. At this moment in time, he is still alive. And he really postulated a hierarchical, he would also call it a phylogenetic, an evolutionary um, way in which we as humans and mammals, how we respond to stress. And in this short clip, I talk about a scenario. I use a scenario, a vignette, to explain how we might go through different responses automatically within our autonomic nervous system, depending on the situation at hand. So I give examples or one example of a potential stressful, threatening situation versus a situation that is actually quite social and safe and connected um, and how we may respond differently based on our spidey senses picking up either that's okay, that's safe, or that's not okay, that's not, a, that's not safe. So have a watch, have a listen, and just even see as you listen and watch if this sparks up memories in your system from the past where you have actually experienced this multiple um, polyvagal response, action, reaction within your own nervous system. Our, what we call, and Porges calls it, our neuroception is off. Our perception of danger or safety is off. But let's just say, again, this is just an example. We see someone who is uh, hurt and we, as a, a good, you know, Samaritan, go to help them. The mo Let's just say, again, we go and then we realize they're actually about to become violent towards us, right? Maybe um, we found someone who is, God only knows what, they're not in a good space, and they start to attack us. 
maybe verbally. If we have a nervous system that has all these branches, which we do, we will phylogenetically go through our human mammalian options to help ease the situation. The first being social engagement. So humans tend to go with the more advanced, the more sophisticated option, which is to engage. Hey, hey, you know, it's okay. Like, I'm not here to hurt you. You know, let's just, let's, let's stay calm. It's okay. Can I get you some help? What is your name? Where do you live? Um, you know, I'm just here to help. I really am in that, that very empathetic social engagement. And let's just say that works. And then that soothes and de-escalates the situation. And then the other person feels it in their system and you co-regulate that helps them self-regulate. It helps you self-regulate. But let's just say the person becomes more belligerent and you start to feel a little danger. You may then start to, I got to get out of here. Or maybe you have a, a, a guard coming up that's like, okay, I better, like, where's my, where are my keys if I want a weapon or, or where, you know, who's around me? We become oriented defensively to try to protect. And so let's just say that that situation doesn't escalate. Then we might start to run, right? We're like, I got to get, get out of here. I got to get out of here. I better run. So that fight flight comes in. Let's just say, again, terrible example, but this is what happens. Let's just say the fight flight doesn't work and they attack us and we are shit out of luck, right? We're like, I can't get out of this. The system then will go into a freeze immobility state. So there's this primitive action that comes at the end. This is what this phylogenetic cascade of action reaction is based on threat. Okay, so I wanted to just spell that out because how we as human beings in the world respond to stress, well, that's a more specific danger, shock, trauma kind of thing. Um, let's just say um, our children come home from school and they're really stressed or something is happening, we would hope you know, as mature regulated people, even if we're trying to learn to be regulated, we're going to be like, hey, what's going on? But many of us, maybe we had upbringings where we came home when we were little from school and we were having a bad day and our caregivers weren't nervous system mature. They weren't regulated and they snapped at us. They went into defensive mode or they ignored us, right? They didn't, they didn't attune to our upset or maybe to our exuberance and happiness. So this social engagement is very important. All right, thank you for watching that and taking that in. Like I said, this is just a small, tiny little bit of a much longer video where I go into deeper examples, I answer questions. Um, and as you saw, or as you heard at the end of that video, how we respond to stress and how we're equipped to read a situation, it isn't just the situation happening right now that determines that. It's how we were wired previously, usually how we were wired and how we were connected with um, with our primary caregivers when we were young, when we were infants, even in utero, and then how they, how our primary caregivers were handled when they were infants and in utero. And so the story goes, this is the story of how um, trauma and stress and our physiological makeup gets passed down through generations. It is not just genetic, it is based on our genetics, but also how those genetics express based on the environment, something called epigenetics. All right, thank you so much for watching, for listening, for being here. Like I said, check out the long form lecture, check out all the other videos here on this channel, and uh, pop by and just say hello in the community feed, check out what's there, and we will see you next time.